Transfer deadline day is coming and we will be appearing live over on the Ball Street channel on August 31st for an alternative look on things. So to make sure you don't miss out, all you need to do is just click, just click just there where Claude's pointing. So subscribe there so you don't miss out. Go on, click it. Welcome back to TUI Transfer Talk and reports from trusted sources in the last 24 hours. It looks like Sofiane Buffal, I hopefully said that right, is on his way to Southampton. He's a nippy attacking midfielder, winger from North Africa, from Morocco, and it could be for a fee of around 20 to 21 million pounds. Looks like they're going to smash our transfer record. Joining me to help us understand who Buffal is, I'm joined by Luke from Reesofhampton.com. How are we doing, mate? And how do we feel about Buffal coming to the Saints? Well, off the back of this news, I'm really, really, really excited. Um, Buffal is, as you said, a nippy attacker. He's quick. He's good on both feet. He's skillful. He can play all across the front line behind the striker. He can play on either wing. But I think if you want to see the best of Buffal and you want to you want to see his best abilities, he's going to play behind the striker. And I think it's an absolutely wonderful addition to the squad if it does come off. For me, it's it's not the, uh, the, the crying player that everyone's been shouting and screaming for for the last two weeks. He's not that target man that everyone's uh, craving for. But what can he add to the team? He can add pretty much anything going forward. I think he's the type of player that we've needed in the last two games. I think there was a massive gaping hole in our attack. Uh, that Sadio Mane had left, I feel, and that that hole was the ability to, to change a game on his own, to turn a game on its head with one moment of magic, and Buffal has that ability. He's a game changer. Lille's manager today only just said that he's never worked with a player like Buffal, someone that can change games for him, and he actually said he changed three games on his own for Lille in that season, and I think that's what we're missing. We're missing someone that can provide that moment of magic and provide that spark going forward. And I think that if he can settle in, if he can recover from his injury fully, we're on for another good season. It seems like a very much a like for like replacement for Sadio Mane. Like everyone's been craving for. Hopefully he's going to pop up with a few goals. I think he scored, what's it, 12, 13 goals last year in, in Liga? Yeah, he got he got 11 goals in Liga. I think he might have got a couple in the Cups and he got five assists as well. So it seems like a very you know important player for Lille last season. Hopefully he can add that to Saints. But... He comes with an injury. This could all fall through. He comes. Uh, I think he's just coming off the back of quite a long-term injury, maybe about two months. I think it's a, min a meniscus tear on, on his leg somewhere. I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I don't have a clue where, where the meniscus is. You know, this all could fall through. He could fail his medical. And how, how damaging would that be? And how, you know, how would that affect the, uh, the you know, putting our, putting our hopes up for it to just all fall through? It is a, it is a meniscus tear that he sustained um, at the end of May, at the end of the season uh, for Lil. Uh, the meniscus is in the knee. And we all know what knee injuries are like. However, it's not as if players haven't recovered from this meniscus tear in previous times. I can, I think I can recall Luis Suarez actually once tearing it and recovering it from it fully. But the club will be well aware of his injury. They'll be well aware of the, the situation. They'll be aware of the, the stage in the recovery. So I think that the club wouldn't, the, would, the club wouldn't go ahead and spend 21 million odd on a player that they knew was injured and had doubts over. I think the club has to be 100% certain that Buffal will deliver for us, like I am, personally. But I think that I think the club know, I think the club appreciate the fact that he's going to take some time, but if they feel it, if they feel that it's worth it, I think we all should too. And I think it's a real signal and a statement of intent from the football club. You know, we are a club that are reluctant to smash our record for, we are reluctant to dip into the market, but you know, it's really going to put an intent on on the market. And do you think there'll be another another face that's going to join us uh, come August thirty first? I think there will be. I think after Buffal, I see us doing one or two more bits of business. I think a lot of it's going to depend on whether or not J Rod does go out on loan. If Jay goes out on loan, I can see us bringing in another forward. And whether that be a target man, whether that be another nifty little striker, I'm not really sure. But of course, if Jay goes, we do need to replace. But I can also see another player coming in. What position that will be, I don't know. I think we could probably do with another centre-back to sort of top it all off. Maybe a backup centre-back that can also act as a long-term replacement for Fonte, potentially. For me, that man would be Jason Vanea from Man City. I think that would be a really, really good buy. Or it could be Nikolai Stanchew from Stale Bucharest. I know Adam Blackmore ruled it out. Uh, well... He said he hadn't been told anything from the sources within the club. But another attacking outlet for us, another player who can score goals, who can create, 
it wouldn't go amiss. But I think you know, if you want to be, if you want to look at an ideal situation, a striker and a centre back along with Buffal would probably be the best situation. And you mentioned Jose Fonte there. A lot of uh, rumours in circulation about his future at the club. This deal could even. Apparently, I've heard today that Mourinho is waiting until transfer deadline day to get this deal over the line. How damaging would that be if we lost our club captain? I'd be devastated. I think it would be damaging just purely based on the fact that he he does resemble Southampton and its rise to the top. But honestly, I don't see us letting Fonte go for any money at all. I, I don't think we'd have left it until the final week of the transfer window to allow Fonte to leave without either having a replacement in line or having let let go of Fonte early on because most of the players that we've let go have been earlier on in the window and some in some cases before the window's even open. So I think the club have been fairly well prepared in, this, in these senses and we've waited for big deals like Buffal. But for me, I don't see Fonte leaving, whether he's happy about this or not, whether he'd want to go to United or not. I don't see the club letting him go at this crucial stage. I think you're absolutely right there. The club won't let him go unless we have an already uh, replacement already lined up. Uh, and one final name that's been circulating the web Last couple of days, Cuco Martin has been linked to Everton to join Ronald Koeman's Blue Army up in Everton. He's now sort of third choice now, isn't he? We brought Pied in to, to act as a right back cover for Cedric, but now it seems like he's picked up an injury and it could Martina could even stay for the club. Well, this is the thing. It, we're in a little bit of a dilemma now because I read earlier, I'm not sure who it was from, but I read that Everton was set to offer 2.5 million for Cuco. The board will probably see that as a 1.5 million profit. He's got a year left on his contract. And if you want to look at a fully fit Southampton squad, he's the third choice player and he's a, he's a fringe player. He's not in Puel's plans. However, as you said about PA's injury, we don't really yet know the extent of it, but we, we know what it's like with the injuries. So I don't know. There's a few things that we need to consider. Well, there you have it, guys. That's it from us on the latest TUI Transfer Talk. But don't forget to check out Luke's articles over on retofhampton.com. But for now, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Cheers, Luke. Cheers, thank you.